I'm Jared Borkowski from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I talk a lot about music theory and mapping out the fretboard and song learning and practice strategies and really a wide variety of topics, but all designed to help us get more creative control over music so we can express ourselves more freely. If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and hit the bell. So now I just want to share something about selective attention. And there is a test that was done. I think they just called it the selective attention test. This is by Daniel Simons, an experimental psychologist and a cognitive scientist. Um, they created this uh, test that is also called the invisible gorilla test where there's a video of several people uh, throwing a basketball, passing basketballs around. There's a group of people with one color shirt and a group of people with another color shirt. And then the test is to say, it, it asks you at the beginning, count how many times the people in white shirts pass the basketball. And then the video is about a minute long. And in the middle of the video, a person in a gorilla suit walks into the middle of everyone throwing basketballs, pounds their chest like this, and then walks off. And 50% of people watching the video didn't notice the gorilla at all. And they were, they were, um, they found it unbelievable. They're like, no way, I would have definitely known that that happened. I can't believe it. Um, so half the people paying attention to one thing didn't notice something else that we would think is like insanely obvious, right? And I did the test even after knowing about it and it was incredible. Like I was accounting the passes and I even knew about the gorilla and I totally understand how it was, um, n how, how that happens. And then I did another test um, and you can go to, I think it's the invisible gorilla dot com or dot org. I'll put a link in the description for that. Um, there's other videos where you can kind of test the selective attention. It's really interesting. So I did another one that was an updated one and they did it on purpose to kind of psych people out because they said, if you know about this test, you were probably looking for the gorilla, but did you notice that the curtains in the background changed color? And also did you notice, and they had like these other things that, that I think they said, did you notice that someone, you know, other people left the stage and just these really obvious things where I look back and like, wow, like the curtains in the background, like completely shifted color, had no idea, you know, wasn't paying attention to that at all. So there are three takeaways, I think, from the Invisible Gorilla study, and that is that one, you are not going to get better at something that you don't focus on, right? Your, your actual attention on. This is just for sure the case, right? We do often think, oh, if I practice enough, you know, I'll keep practicing, my ears will get better. You know, oh, I'll keep practicing, I'm just gonna be playing this thing. Um, and eventually, you know, I'll understand the theory of it or something like that. You know, any element, there's no way we get better at it unless we actually focus on that thing, right? Unless we're actually paying attention to that. So it's just passively, we're not gonna get better at something. So the flip side of that is that you're actually not going to ingrain and learn something that you're doing wrong um, if you are focusing on something else, right? And you might be doing it consistently in a way that you don't want to, right? So some technique thing and say you're, you're focusing on one thing, trying to improve one element of your practice. Um, and the fear that we're kind of taught is that if you're practicing something wrong, you're gonna learn it wrong. But if it's not the thing you're paying attention to, you're actually, um, getting what you're focusing on and the other stuff, it might be happening, but you're not actually learning it in the same way that you're learning something that you're paying attention to. So all it takes is that you go pay attention to that separately, right? Whatever it is. Okay, now I'm gonna think about my tone. Now I'm gonna think about the time. Now I'm gonna pay attention to figuring out the theory. Now I'm going to whatever, whatever. Um, so cycling our attention between different elements of our playing and think about how much is going on when we're playing. I mean, just a simple thing, an incredible amount of activity is happening. So this is a way to, keep the challenge level, right? Keep ourselves out of the comfort zone by um, rotating through our attention, rotating our focus through um, various elements of what's happening in our playing. And then we have this kind of control and familiarity with all of those elements and, and not leaving anything to chance, not leaving anything to like, all right, if I repeat it again, maybe it'll get better. The other takeaway from the Invisible Gorilla study is just a reminder to all of us, like if you're performing, everything that you think people notice, they almost certainly do not notice, right? Every, all the mistakes that you thought were like dire mistakes, mostly people are not gonna notice. Even if they are there, if they were maybe listening for them, okay, maybe they would notice them, but they're not, 
right? They're just um, taking in the music in whatever way that they are taking it in. So it's a reminder to all of us that like people don't notice that stuff and that should be encouraging. Like, okay, we need to put ourselves out there more. We need to get into situations that we want to get into for performing, for improving, for, you know, experiencing music in the way we want to, jamming with other people, that kind of thing. Um, so much of what we're worried about going wrong is not even going to be noticed. So Daniel Simons, the one who did the Invisible Gorilla study, he says this himself. In an interview with NPR, Daniel Simons said, I was just doing a study this past semester where I edited together a film and we were making a change in the film and it was, and I was fully convinced that the change was just way too big this time. And I was assuming that maybe 80 or 90% of people would notice it and the study wouldn't work. And it turned out that only 30% of people noticed it. So what they did in that uh, video that he's talking about is they actually changed the actor from one scene to the next, just changed the person altogether. And only 30% 30% of people noticed it. So again, just more evidence for us to be like, okay, what we think is like crazy obvious because we are just so aware of it because we're doing it, like him changing the actor. He edited that, so he knows. And he's like, how could anyone not notice that? Only 30% of people noticed it. So again, with our own playing, just know that uh, everyone's in, in their own world. They're not focusing on the thing that you're focusing on. They're not gonna notice. <laughs> Grab my chord chart. It's called Chords with Color. It's super cool. It has a bunch of theory information with the Roman numerals, the chord tones involved, extensions added. You'll see how cool it is if you want to give it a try. There's a link in the description to grab it. Thanks so much. That's it for this lesson. Take care. Happy practicing. See you next time.